Let's receive right now in Jesus' name the fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive right now the fresh manna from heaven, the word of the living God. Father, we just thank you for it. And Father, in Jesus' name, I believe that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, and that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And Father, that you quicken this word to each one of us, that you give us answers, that you um, give us exactly, Father, what we need to hear today, and that this word will be with us forever. Now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. Now let's believe we receive um, our reception of the word. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you give me ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that today I hear the voice of the Spirit. I thank you, Father, that today this word enters into my heart and my mind as light and that it is with me forever. For this word will never be taken away from me in Jesus' name. So we are learning by the Holy Spirit how to get rid of the thorns in our heart, how to get them out, and then how to keep them out in Jesus' name so that our heart can be receptive to receive the Word of God. And it's like a two-step process. So what does the Word say? He tells us in Psalms 55, he says, Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. And, you know, the thorns are what? Cares, worries, anxieties, fears, and he says the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. But we are focusing right now on the cares of this world. Remember, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So these are cares of this world that we are in, but since we are not a part of that, we are of the kingdom of God. Then what he's doing is the Holy Spirit, who is the best teacher, he is teaching us how to live out of the kingdom. But you know, there's a, our part and then there's God's part. So we have to do our part and then believe him to do his part. So let's read this again in Psalms 55, 22. Cast, throw out, throw down, throw away, cast away your burden upon the Lord. He tells us where to cast them, doesn't he? And he shall sustain, he shall make provision, he shall provide for you. He shall never allow the righteous to be moved, to waver, to slip, to shake, to fall, or to be out of course. And this is because our trust is in him. So how do we do that? If he says cast, then you are going to literally throw throw. And that's, that's one of the words for cast is throw, throw those burdens on the Lord. Throw them on him. And how do you do that? Well, let me uh, give you first Peter five again. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting throwing all your cares, all your anxieties, 
all of your worries, and I'm going to add all of your burdens over on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. And so here's what you do. You name whatever care or worry it is, and maybe you've got several. You know, many people live a lifetime and they just live, even, even Christians, I would say the majority of Christians, trying to handle everything themselves and trying to be strong enough to carry the load instead of actually learning how to cast the care on him so that he can take care of it for you. So the, thank God for the Holy Spirit who is teaching us this to cast, throw all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns over on him right now for he cares for you. He loves you and he wants to take care of it. And I shared with you yesterday how you are not designed to carry even the slightest burden, the slightest worry, the slightest care. So he said to cast them all on him. We have to practice this. We have to learn and be a doer of this. You know, he says to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. And it's when you do the word, when you trust the word enough to do it and allow that word to enable you to do it, that's when it becomes a part of you. And that's when it becomes uh, your way of life. So you take and na name a care, name, name a worry. And this is what you do. You say, Father, in Jesus' name, you said in your word to cast my burden upon you and you would sustain me. You also said in your word that I was to cast all of my cares over on you. So Lord, I am casting this care on you right now, once and for all in Jesus' name. And then you put it in his hands. Of course, you're doing that as you go boldly into the throne room and shut the door. And so then, if Satan tries to bring that thought back to you, then you say, nope, Lord, here it is. I cast it back on you. And just keep doing that until you have it in his hands permanently. And it doesn't matter how many times Satan tries to bring that thought back to you. And you just say this, say, I refuse to take this thought. I refuse to think about this in Jesus' name. I refuse those thoughts in Jesus' name. And it may be a fear. I refuse to fear in Jesus' name. So all of these things are designed of the enemy to steal the word from you, to keep the word from producing in your life. So yesterday, I, as I finished up, I said I would share a testimony with you about salvation. And this is about someone else. But um, most of you know and are familiar with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. When, well, they, they got married and... Um, but his mother had been praying for him, for his salvation. And this gives you the power just to, to tell you, mothers, fathers, uh, grandparents, pray for your children and grandchildren. Don't take for granted what that they're going to come to the Lord. Make this a priority in your life. And she was very earnest about praying for him and uh, Gloria. Well, I don't know all of the details, but this is what little bit I have heard, that Gloria was sitting in, I think it might have been an apartment, and she said they had nothing, that they had gone into business and lost everything, and uh, but she was just sitting there and she picked up a Bible that, and, and you know it was the Holy Spirit that led her to do this, that 
um, his mother had given him. I think her name was Vanessa Copeland. And she opened it up, and in the front it said, Ken Precious, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that one scripture the Holy Spirit took to Gloria's heart. And right then, she received Jesus and she said, Lord, if there's any way that you can use me, use me. Oh my, the power of a mother's prayer. And then Kenneth, if I understand this correctly, was in a hotel room. He didn't know what was going on with Gloria. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord just came into that hotel room. I'm telling you, saints, when you pray, God hears and answers. And he was born again. And he said that he remembered that, that the Lord told him to get saved. And he said he remembered, or the Lord just brought up in his uh, spirit, what one of his Sunday school teachers had said about how to receive Jesus. And right then and right there, he became born again. And the rest is history because God took that mother's prayers and these two people had been so tremendous in bringing the truth of the gospel to the body of Christ and how to walk in victory Believer's voice of victory. And I'm telling you, many, many times, the things he said just cut through the religion that I had grown up with and cut through and the truth set Frank and I both free. So in sharing that testimony, just to encourage you in praying for your children, your grandchildren, or anyone else, it is God's will for them to be saved now. And don't, don't put a time limit on it. You put it on now. Don't say, well, they're going to get saved before they die. No, no. Give God your faith for the now because he is a now God and he's not willing that any should perish. Well, we're going to move on to another area. Um that many times is a care, a worry, a fear in people's minds and hearts. And this is safety. Safety for you and safety for your family. So take the care of that, the fear of something happening to a child or something happening to um to yourself and you put that care, that fear, that anxiety over on the Lord. And then you go to the promise and replace the fear with the promise. The first and foremost promise is Psalms 91. I thank God for him teaching us Psalms 91. And I, as well as you, probably have many, many testimonies of God's protection. I know for sure I do. So let's look at this. He starts out and says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then the next phrase is the key to this. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. That is the key to your safety. What are you saying about the Lord? What are you saying about your safety? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. So
So let's just expound on that. Let's meditate on that. I will say of the Lord, let's stop right there because many of you know good Christian people that maybe have died in an accident or died with some terrible disease. But what does this say? I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. So you have to find out what, well, you don't have to find this out because the word is true. You just have to know for yourself that what you believe and what you say about you and your family is what's going to take place for you and your family. So if you are saying Psalms 91 for you and your family, and saints, it does not take long to speak that and confess that in by faith every morning. He is my refuge, and I say he is our refuge. And I start out calling every member of my family by name after I put the blood of Jesus over them and just uh, surrounded them with faith and love. And then I start on Psalms 91. So he is my refuge. Do you know what a refuge is? Several years ago, we went, Frank and I were driving somewhere in North Alabama, and we went by this place that said animal refuge. And I, the Holy Spirit just kind of arrested my attention at that moment to, and said, what is a refuge? And of course I asked Frank and he said, well, it's a place where the animals are safe. No hunters can go in there. Nobody can harm the animals. So I thought about that. The Lord is my refuge. That means nobody can penetrate God to get to me. And the devil for sure cannot penetrate God to get to me. He is our refuge. Say that right now. Say, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. He is my family's refuge. He is an invisible shield. He, you can't see it, but once you declare it, and we just say forever and ever, so it's just good to continually acknowledge that. But as you acknowledge that, then that's what he becomes. And he is my fortress. A fortress is a place where you are inside and then he is the walls around you and no one, not even the devil, can penetrate those walls. He is the refuge of your mind. He is the refuge of your body. He is your fortress. So let's say that again. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my family's refuge. He is our fortress. He is our God. In him alone do I trust, lean upon, and rely upon. But you know, when you say trust, a lot of Christians just think, well, I'm just going to trust the Lord for whatever he wants. No, you cannot do that. You have to be very specific about the word and trust him for what he said he will do for you. You have to believe him. It's only your faith that separates you from maybe what other people are receiving. What you believe and say about God is what you are going to have. What another person believes and says, and if they're not believing and saying anything, then they're not going to receive that part of their salvation. 
But this is a part of our salvation. And then he says, surely, surely, that is for sure. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Surely, it is a sure thing. So as you say that, you declare surely he, my God, my Father, shall deliver me and my family from every snare of the fowler. Who is the fowler? It is Satan. So there are not only physical snares, there are spiritual snares that the Lord has uh, quickened to me to declare over my family that we are delivered from these snares of the fowler. So from the word of God, I'll just share the ones that I know. Uh, one is pride. One is uh, strife. One is unforgiveness. One is the words of your mouth because he says you are snared with the words of your mouth. You are taken with the words of your mouth. So these are all snares that God says he will deliver us out of. And I pray that my family has the revelation of uh, the power of their words and that he sets a watch on all of our mouths in Jesus' name and that we are delivered from the snare of pride, from the snare of envy and jealousy, from the snare of um, unforgiveness, from the snare of strife, of being in strife with other people. The Lord delivers us out of these snares and these traps of the enemy. And these are genuine traps that the enemy tries to lay for the believer. But once you know the trap and snare and you have the Holy Spirit that quickens to you and says, no, no, mm -mm, no, no, that's a snare. That's a trap. Don't be in unforgiveness with that person. That's a trap of the enemy. And immediately the word rises up and you say, oh, I walk in love. I forgive my brother. I forgive my sister in Jesus name. And he delivers us through the power of his word, which brings to my mind another uh, promise, a scripture in the New Testament where the Holy Spirit said through Paul, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is able, God is faithful. Let's see, how does, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that that you are able, but will with the temptation make the way of escape that you may be able to overcome it. So he will give you his word so that you can overcome any temptation or snare of the enemy. And also that he will put his words in your mouth. The word says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Words are so powerful. So why do some Christians, good, good, good Christian people, have accidents, uh, have injuries? Because uh, of saying the wrong thing. Rather than saying, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, he is my God, then many believers are saying, oh, I'm just afraid to drive. I'm afraid for my children to drive. There's so many crazy people out there. And what if somebody out there is um, is texting or on the phone or or whatever. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. So surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers 
and under his wings shall you trust. And you do that for your whole family, that under God's wings, I place my family in his shadow, under his wings, in Jesus' name. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And what is his truth? His truth is the word that says he will be our safety. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, or I can say nor for the bullets that fly by day. He said, you shall not be afraid. It doesn't matter where you are. You will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And listen to this. A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. And you put in this in the first person and you say this over your family. A thousand shall fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. And remember when the children of Israel, when uh, they were in the land of Goshen and God came to deliver them and he said that he set a redemption between them and between Egypt. And Jesus is our redemption. But he drew the line between Egypt and between his people. And you are his people. If you will believe and acknowledge this. And it said that none of the plagues, there were the plagues of the frogs, where there were frogs everywhere, but not one frog went into Goshen. There was darkness. It said so dark, it was thick in Egypt, but it was all light in Goshen. So the line is drawn around your family of the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you will believe that and mix faith with that, that you are separated from the rest of the world and what you believe and say over your family is either going to allow God to um, be your safety and protection or it is going to allow the enemy to come in. And probably in a couple of days, we're going to talk about um, being delivered from all of our fears. But for right now, you go to Psalms 91 and say what he said and just mix faith with this whole psalm that a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. No sickness, no disease, no calamity, no accidents shall even come near us in Jesus' name. This is a good word. So cast the care and get rid of the fear and rebuke any fear that you've had for safety or for your health. We'll call this health and safety. Uh, of your family, you and your family, and roll that care, cast that care on the Lord, that anxiety on the Lord, and then take the promise and mix faith with the promise. And how do we mix faith with the promise? We also having the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. So you believe it and you speak it. It is worth taking the time to do this, saints, for you to live a victorious life, then it is imperative that we follow his commands on this. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word. And thank God that this word gives us the power to do it in Jesus' name.